Today, I want to talk about logging in WPF applications and demonstrate how to set it up. So why would you want to log in a WPF application anyways? Well, let's say that one of your users is using your app and they're experiencing some kind of crash or a weird bug. Well, let's say you don't have logging. It's going to be difficult to figure out what the user was doing at the time of the issue. But if you do have logging, you can have the user give the logs to you, maybe email a file with the logs. And if you find anything interesting in the logs that might be causing the crash or bug, then you're going to be able to fix it pretty quickly, hopefully and your customers are going to be much more satisfied. So first, I'm going to show off how to set up the built-in .NET Core logging, and I'm going to show off how to set that up and integrate that with dependency injection and the host builder, and then we're going to take a look at Serialog, which is one of the most popular third-party logging providers. I'm going to go over why we actually need to use Serialog in most cases for WPF applications, and then we're going to set up Serialog with a host builder and dependency injection. So let me show off the demo I have here, extremely simple application. All we have is this main window, and on here we have a button to make a sandwich, and it shows a message box that we have successfully made a sandwich, so everything is good. My application is an MVVM application, just have my main window with that button, a main view model that has the make sandwich command that the button binds to, and in this make sandwich command all we do is make the sandwich. So I want some logging in this command. And I know this is a simple kind of dumb example, but my main goal here is really just to show off how to set up logging, and I don't want to have a bunch of unnecessary fluff around that. Let's stay focused here. So I want some logging in that command, so my command is going to need a logger. So let's actually create a logger. And to do that, we're going to need a logger factory. And to get a logger factory, we can use loggerfactory.create. But of course, logger factory we need to actually install a package to get that, and that is Microsoft Extensions.logging. So let me actually show that off in the NuGet Package Manager. And here we go, it's actually the second one that pops up without even browsing for anything. So as you can see, logging, pretty popular and important for applications. Let's install that, and let's import the Microsoft Extensions logging namespace so we can create our logger factory. And we can configure this logger factory with an action that takes in a builder. But we'll do all this configuration in just a little bit. Let's actually get this logger factory into a variable so we can use it. So an I logger factory. So the purpose of a factory object is to create an object. So in this case, we have a logger factory, and that's going to create loggers for us. So if we take our logger factory, we can create a logger. And we can specify the type that this logger is going to be for. This logger is going to be for the make sandwich command. That sounds so stupid to say. But let's get that logger into a variable for our good old make sandwich command. And we'll just call this the make sandwich command logger. All right, now that we have our logger, let's pass that into the make sandwich command so that we can do some logging inside of that command. So we'll add that field to the constructor. And we can also make this read only. But we now have our logger inside of the make sandwich command. So now we can do some logging to track the creation of our wonderful sandwich. So I might log some information here that we are creating a sandwich, and then when we're finished, I might log some more information that we have successfully created a sandwich. All right, I'm pretty hyped to make this sandwich. Let's get some logs in here and see how this is going. All right, so I might expect my logs to pop up down here because this is the output window. So let's make a sandwich, and there's no logs. And why is that? Well, that is because we haven't configured our logger factory, and this should be builder, not builder. So our logger factory needs providers. So let's start off by just clearing all the providers because we're going to add our own and we will add a console provider. And we actually don't have this extension method on the builder because we need a NuGet package for that. So that should be Microsoft Extensions Logging Console. And here we have that right here and we will install that. And there we go. Now we have our extension method. So we should see those logs finally, right? So I make the sandwich and still no logs. And the reason for that is because this isn't actually the console. This is the debug output. And WPF apps don't really have a console, unlike maybe a web application where you start that up and you actually see that console and it actually usually already has the logs in it. So instead of add console, we will use add debug. And we're going to need a different package for that. So it should be Microsoft Extensions Logging Debug. And here we go, we have that right here. So we could uninstall the console, but I'll leave it for now. And here we go, we get that extension method to add debug. So now I will make a sandwich. And... There we go, we got our logs down here, so our logging is working. And obviously there's more configuration we can do in here. There's other providers you can add, you can even add 
custom providers with ad provider but of course that is outside the scope of this video of course you can also set minimum levels so maybe we only want to show error logs and above which means we will only show error and critical logs so i'll change this to a log error failed to create the sandwich and here we go all we get is the error log we can also override this minimum level for certain namespaces so we can add a filter and we're going to do this for the logging demo command namespace so that's the namespace for our make sandwich command and for this namespace the log level will be debug so that should include our information log before we make the sandwich and there we go we get our log for creating the sandwich so the override filter is working all right so let's say you're using microsoft hosting in your wpf application so you have an ihost to manage your application and you configure services in this host and in this case we resolve our make sandwich command from dependency injection because we register it here as a singleton so we're also going to have to resolve our iLogger from dependency injection as well. So that iLogger will actually get resolved by default. So if we put a breakpoint in our make sandwich command, put it in the constructor. Let me just comment out all this old logger factory stuff because we're not actually using that at all right now. Whoops, and I messed up this dependency injection because the main view model takes an i command, but we have simply registered our make sandwich command. So we could just register this as an i command. Of course, this isn't going to work at all if you have multiple commands in your application. But for this case, we're just going to get that just to get everything working. So we hit our constructor for the make sandwich command and we have a logger. So the i logger type is already registered in dependency injection. All we need to do is configure it. And to do that, we can configure logging for our host builder. And to configure this, we take an i logging builder action and simply configure the builder. So it's actually the same builder that we have in this logger factory create method down here so in fact I'm just gonna copy this callback cut it out and paste it into my configure logging and everything should work exactly the same as it did before we had set up the host so I make my sandwich and here is my logs in the debug output so everything is still working but if you haven't noticed already we're outputting our logs to debug and what is that going to do for us it's not really going to do much because if a user is having an issue with the application, then obviously that user isn't going to be running the app in Visual Studio and have a debug window to look at. And also, we're not persisting these logs anywhere anyways, so once the application's done with and we start running it again, we can't look at the old logs. So the debug provider is not going to work for us. We need a provider that is going to work outside of debug, outside of Visual Studio, and persist the logs so that users can send us logs if they face any issues in their application. So the easiest place we could persist logs is to a file. That sounds like a wonderful option. But unfortunately, Microsoft and the built-in .NET logger does not agree with us there. But that is okay because we can use a third-party logger that will give us a way to output our logs to a file. And the logger I choose is the very popular Siri log. Definitely one of my favorite loggers whenever I'm not using the built-in .NET logging. So let's get the Siri log NuGet package. As you can see, this is a popular one as well, near the top of the list without even browsing for anything. So let's install that. So let's set this up without a host real quick. So we need an iLogger for a make sandwich command, and we want this to be a Siri log logger. So first we need a logger configuration to configure our logging, of course, and import Siri log for that. And let's actually skip configuration for now and just create our logger. So we can take our logger configuration and create the logger and this gives us back a Siri log logger, so a different logger from the Microsoft extensions logging. But I would really like to keep this same iLogger type, just because this is a pretty standard iLogger type, since it is supported by Microsoft. So to create a Siri log logger that satisfies this type, what I am going to do is add a NuGet package for Siri log.aspnet core. So install that. Wouldn't it just be nice if we could just do something like this? So creating a logger for a make sandwich command, and it will give us back this Microsoft iLogger type for the make sandwich command. But that is not exactly how we do it, of course. Instead, what we need is our logger factor again. So we'll create that same way as before. So get that into a variable for our iLogger factory. And now with this iLogging builder, we can add Siri log. And we can pass in a logger for that. So that will be our logger that we create with our logger configuration. So create a logger and let's actually move that configuration into this builder callback. And now our logger factory is configured with Siri log. So we're going to have a Siri log logger, which means to create our logger for the make sandwich command, 
we can just use our logger factory, create the logger for our command. But of course, the whole point of this was to write our logs to a file. We need that persistent storage. So let's configure this logger configuration to write to a file. And whoa, look at that constructor. So there's all kinds of configuration we can do here for writing to a file. But for now, we'll just add a path for the logging file, and I'll call this just test.txt. And this is a relative path, so this txt file is just going to be output in my bin directory where the application is built and running from. Alright, so I'll do this a few times to get some logs going in here. Alright, so here is my bin where my application was run from, and if I scroll on down, here we go, we got our test.txt with our wonderful logs. So this is some nice formatting in here. We get the level of the log and we get a nice timestamp in here. Obviously you can configure that more with this output template parameter on the file method. You can also set a minimum level for the log, so similar to what we did with the Microsoft iLogger. And there's all kinds of options here, I'm not going to go into all of them, but one I definitely like to use is this rolling interval. So if we set that to something like day, let's write some new logs. And now as we can see, it appended the date, so we got the year, the month, and the day. And since that was appended to the file, that means every single day, we're going to get a different log file. So that means we're not going to be stuck with one gigantic log file that spans forever. And it'll be split up day to day, which is nice because maybe your user wasn't experiencing the bug or crash the other day, but they just started experiencing it today or on some specific day. Then maybe you could just get the logs for that specific day. And there's all kinds of different rolling intervals. So you could have month two if you just want different files for different months. But I do think day is probably a good start. We can also set the minimum level here, so maybe we'll only show that error log for failing to create the sandwich. And there we go, this time we only got the error log down here. And another thing that's definitely nice is it appends to our previous logs. So it doesn't override this file with only our latest logs, it just adds to it. And last but not least, similar to the Microsoft logger, we can do a minimum level override. So for a particular namespace, maybe the logging demo dot commands namespace we want the minimum log level to be debug so we get that information log that we have started to create the sandwich and there we go now we get our information log as well because we're within this namespace and now finally time for the grand finale so using the microsoft hosting with the ihost configuring services in dependency injection and using siri log to log to a file so for the microsoft logging before we used configure logging but this time, we're just going to use use Siri log, and inside here, we can do our logging configuration. So we can configure this callback that takes in the host builder context and the logger configuration that we want to configure. So the host builder context, we'll just call it host, and we also get a logger configuration, which we do want to configure. So let's just grab the same configuration we have down here. So we're going to write to a file. We'll have the minimum level as error, and we'll override for the logging demo.commands namespace where the minimum level will be debug. So let's grab all this, paste it in here, and of course we're going to apply all of this to the logger configuration that gets passed into this use serial log callback. So we configure the logger inside here, and we can remove everything down here. So everything's done inside the host, and we should get the same functionality. So I made a sandwich, we'll look at the logs, and here we go, here are the new logs. Maybe I should recreate this file actually. And here are my fresh logs. And maybe while you're debugging, you also want the logs written to the debug console so we can actually see them without having to open the file. So we can just do a write to debug. And there we go, we get our logs down here and we have successfully set up logging in our application. And this is definitely the approach that I typically use because I typically use the Microsoft hosting iHost. And obviously I have to use a third party provider such as Siri Log so that I can write to a file. So hopefully this is a good start to setting up logging in your own applications. We didn't cover everything associated with logging, but I did just want to go over setting it up since logging is a little bit different for WPF applications because unlike an ASP.NET web application, writing to a console in a WPF app isn't really going to be sufficient and writing to a file is one of the best options, but of course can't use the built-in Microsoft logging, need a third-party logger. And also in WPF apps, we don't get the host setup scaffolded out for us. We do have to set it up manually, so I did want to cover that as well. So that is logging in WPF applications. Hopefully you all can use this to collect logs from your users and solve any bugs or crashes in your application. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. But other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.